Hello, Michael Voris here. Before we start today's Vortex episode, remember that you can watch this episode and all the videos and content we produce over at churchmilton.com. There's Vortex, of course. There's headlines, the download, the one true faith, where did the Bible come from, case files, saint of the day, all sorts of free and premium shows, not to mention daily news and commentary on current events relevant to the Catholic world. So please click the link after the video, and we'll see you at churchmilitant.com. God bless you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. If you ever have the opportunity to speak privately with some bishops or senior clergy, and you get the chance to ask them directly why they are so lenient when it comes to dissidents or bad politicians or corrupt priests and so forth, all that stuff, you're more than likely going to get an answer that goes something like this. We have to take the good with the bad. Well, that sounds all loving and kind of merciful and compassionate and understanding and virtuous on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's also easily dismissed as naive or self-serving. First, self-serving. Many bishops simply do not have the intestinal fortitude to mix it up with their aberrant clergy or lo local fake Catholic pro-abortion politician, so they hide behind the excuse, and that's what it is, an excuse that some of what they do is good, and we have to honor that and be respectful of that. Hog wash. You don't accomplish a good by tolerating an evil that you don't have to tolerate. And even if you do have to temporarily tolerate it, the church teaches you must be spending yourself to bring that evil to an end. But that always seems to be part the part that just never gets pursued. All the toleration, never trying to affect the change. There's no spirit of confrontation among many Catholic leaders. Unless they're crushing tradition, then they're pretty confrontational. It's something that must happen at bishop school. You know, when they go in, they, they get their miter in exchange for their spine or their guts because the lack of spine or lack of guts shown is exemplary on the part of so many. Get a miter, lose your guts. No courage, nothing. They are merely content to float downriver, pretending that they are in control and dealing behind the scenes in a most adroit manner, solving all things quietly in ways that the mere laity can just simply not understand. Oh, the pressures of office. Can't be that much pressure when the office is never exercised, again, unless against tradition-minded clergy or laity. But the reality, despite the protestations, is nothing ever gets solved. In fact, things get worse. More and more people become scandalized, become disillusioned, and begin to weaken in their faith. If the leaders don't seem to really believe, then why should I? It's a question lots of weak, weak faith Catholics ask. Dang it, this is the one true faith established by Jesus Christ. It's his holy bride for whom he gave his life on the cross. Start acting like it. Stop pussyfooting around with people, you bishops were talking to, who are enemies of Christ. Dang it all, call them out and call them to repentance like our blessed Lord did. And this next point is the other one which helps explain the current crisis in excuse making, naivete. It's pretty clear that if many leaders are not self-serving and choosing to keep their mouths shut so as not to damage their careers or tick off their most reliable donors, then they are incredibly naive. They simply don't believe that Christ has enemies, that the serpent has offspring, and that their sheep are the targets of those diabolical entities. They just don't see the world that way. That way, of course, being the way in which God himself presented it to us to stop us from being naive and start dealing in reality. You know, we are too sophisticated now to believe in that medieval stuff. It was fine then, but no longer. Do you really expect us to believe that there exists forces that actually want to kill us spiritually? Huh, really? Those are the kind of behind-the-scenes responses and chatter and attitudes that you get when you approach these killer subjects. We need to look for common ground. That's an expression that gets thrown around constantly. It's a common phrase, constantly being bandied about. Do you look for common ground with a rapist or a serial killer? Do you look for common ground with a slave owner or a child sex trafficker? 
Don't they all have some good that we can encourage and work with, you know, accept and cultivate? Perhaps the serial killer or child sex trafficker is good with puppies. Sure, he doesn't want to throw in the towel on his evil just yet, so let's take a long, slow pass on that for now and talk about his favorite puppy food. Let's establish some common ground around the issue of puppy chow. Then perhaps we can compromise a bit, take the good with the bad, and reduce the child kidnappings by, say, a third. That would be a good start. See, that's progress, isn't it? Now only 50 children will fall victim to him instead of 75. See how good common ground is? What brilliant tacticians these statesmen churchmen are, so deft, so adroit at moving people from evil to good. Compromise is for losers, because when the man standing on 100% solid truth moves even one step from that, both he and the truth lose. The only common ground both sides find themselves on is quicksand. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Thanks for watching this episode of The Vortex. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and head over to churchmilitant.com to watch The Vortex headlines, download, Saint of the Day, and countless premium videos on church history, teaching, and apologetics. We have hundreds of hours of videos as well as articles and stories you won't find at any other Catholic outfit. And don't forget, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So be sure to follow us there as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you over at churchmilton.com. God love you.